Hello and welcome to Bosch Power Tools. So today we'll talk about the product. The product here is Bosch Professional GSB 600RE kit. So what is this kit used for? This kit is used for all our day-to-day -day activities. So you can drill into metal, wood, uh, masonry, light concrete. So it's a multi-purpose uh, toolkit. So that can be used for various applications. So let's try to understand what's there in the kit right now. So most of it about the kit is given in the carton sleeve itself. So let's try to understand so what's given out there in the carton sleeve. So this helps us in understanding what are the different applications we can get this product into, right? So that's the carton sleeve that you have. So this is removable. So we'll do that later. So first and foremost, the word here is professional. So this is for all the professional use. And then it's an impact drill. When I say it's an impact drill, so this can be used on all the brick and light concrete applications, okay? So the brick application is also called as a masonry application or a masonry drill, right? And here we talk about GSB. So G stands for professional, SB stands for impact borer or impact drill. 600, that's the wattage of the motor, so the, the motor of the uh, drill machine that we have. RE, it's R stands for reversible, E stands for electronic. So when we talk about reversible, it means it can drill forward and drill reverse in the drilling mode. So that's what is RE and E stands for electronic, which means as you press the trigger of the switch more and more. So the RPM of the chuck keeps increasing. So that's RE. So we have explained the nomenclature of the two. What else is available? So 600 and there is one thing out here. So this says the chuck, so that size of the chuck. So this is a 13 mm chuck, right? So this is a 13 mm chuck. So what's out here? So this is listing all the accessories that are inside the box, right? So these are all the various accessories that we have. So we will talk in detail about all the accessories when we open the box inside, right? Yeah. And um, something that we missed, so the B connected. So there is a QR code. So the QR code is on the box out here. So you can scan the QR code and get yourself registered for BE Connected, all right? And uh, all right, so onto the uh, back side of the sleeve. So this is what is the tool looking like, all right? Okay, so again, so we see the various applications that the box can, or the tool can do. So first it's drilling into light concrete or the masonry. So this is drilling into wood and this is drilling into metal. So uh, and there is a feature here. So that means it's screw driving in both forward and reverse. So that's the application. The tool has a double insulation, which means it is uh, preventing from electrical shocks. And uh, this is a soft grip. So which means the grip is soft at the handle and some technical details over here. So I'll broadly read this out for you. So input power is 600 watts. Uh, the chuck is keyed chuck. So that means it has, it needs a key to work on. So the speed is from 0 to 2800 RPM. So the diameter of drilling in masonry or light concrete is 13 mm. That's the maximum and maximum drilling diameter in wood that is 25 mm. Uh, maximum drilling in metal is 10 mm and the impact drill rate is uh, 25,000 uh, blows per minute. Okay. And the weight of the tool is a kilo and a half or maybe 1.7 kgs. So that's roughly plus or minus, right? Here we have a GSB uh, 600 RE. So we already removed the sleeve. So this is the hard box that we have. Pretty robust and uh, very convenient to carry. Oops. You can see it's, it's pretty easy to do that. So let's open and see what's inside the box. All right. Um, so this is the outlay that we have. So the tool is right in the center. All right. So various accessories along that goes along with the tool. Uh, there is a handle. The handle goes with the machine. Uh, and then we have a hammer. Then we have a plier. Then we have a wrench. So and then we have some plastic uh, plugs as well. So that's the broad outlay of the box and the kit. Let's talk about the tool. The tool that we have now is GSB 600 RE. So this is a reversible and electronic control tool. And this is a 13 mm chuck that we have, 
okay and please look at this knob over here so this is to decide on which mode we are going to drill are we going to drill on a normal drill mode or are we going to take it on to the impact or the hammering mode so when you want to drill in a brick wall or a light concrete please use it on this extreme so there is a logo here of hammer so you use it on this uh, mode and do it on concrete or brick wall if you want to work on wood and metal push it to this extreme there is a simple drill bit uh, logo that's put here so that's on this mode what else then we have this forward reverse so you need to trigger this out so this is more for screw driving all right and there is, this is on off switch and this is a lock on button so i can press this and press this button so this is locked so which means it's going to be a continuous running all right how do you disengage press leave that's simple all right so uh, we have the handle and the depth gauge so they are also equally important and uh, this can be fitted onto the tool so that uh, we can uh, hold the tool with two uh, holders which means this is the primary holding arm and this becomes the secondary holding arm this is more for safety all right so there we try to tighten it up yeah so this is sufficiently tightened and then this one it needs to you can just pop this in so this tells you what is the depth of the drill bit that you need to gauge all right ready to go okay so and then uh, we try to uh, run this so before we run this so this is a sim uh, a very very simple uh, two uh, pin socket which is uh, broadly available all across india so never never a problem to uh, get the right power point for this the socket as well as the cable is isi so you have the logo both on the cable and the socket and this is totally bis compliant so let's try to run this so before we want to do that let's try to fix a drill bit onto the uh, chuck so we need to take the chuck key from here so that's at the bottom right and then we try to fix so just compress this and then we tighten it so we have put the drill bit here now i'm going to plug this in and uh, please observe one thing as i trigger this more the rpm would increase and so would the noise of the machine so this is important so i'm holding here on the handle and the second one uh, my finger is coming onto the switch here now we also see that there is this black color thing so this is the rubberized grip so this is for your comfort first and second this helps you in having a fatigue free working so that's very important for the tool we might get into a situation where we want to identify what are these different bits for and how do we identify because all of them more or less look the same so how do we know that which drill bit is being used for what purpose is it for metal wood or for brick so a very very simple technique i will teach you how to do that okay so let's try to understand this uh, i'll pick the first drill bit so this is for wood okay so let's understand about the wood drill bit so how do you identify a wood drill bit so it, this has got the sharpest uh, cone here so if i'm going to press with my finger i feel the prick so that means this drill bit is for wood so all for wooden applications and the very purpose that this cone is given is basically to get yourself centered into the wood all right centered into the wood so that's the drill bit for wood as simple as that so among these three three drill bits there is a drill bit that's going to be totally blunt which means i'm trying to press it no it's okay i'm not i'm not getting hurt i don't feel any uncomfortable uh, situation so this drill bit is for your brick wall all right and there is a third drill bit it's somewhere between sharp cone and somewhere between a blunt cone so i'm trying to put this yes so there is a slight irritation that i feel 
and that is this drill bit is for metal okay so again we try to understand all three of them so the one the sharpest the one with the sharpest and the comb this is for wood the one that's totally blunt this is this is for your brick wall or light concrete the one in between them so that's on the medium uh, sharpness this is for your metal so that's as simple as that even if you have misplaced something on this thing with the sharpness of the drill bit you can find out which is the correct product or the accessory that you need to use for that particular application okay so here we have a gsb 600 re so we do two applications on wood right now uh, so one is a screw driving second one is uh, drilling a hole in the wood all right so we already have a screwdriver bit out here so let's try to do a screw driving first and foremost uh, always use the screw driving on a lower rpm all right so here we have a screw screw here so let's try to fix it in all right there it goes and then at a low rpm Uh, important uh, this has to be always on this side so that means it's only a drill mode there is no impact you see that's perfectly done so how do you unscrew it so change the direction and we, let's pick up some of the screws here so again here So now next we do a simple activity and that's the drilling in wood. Yeah. So out here we have a, a wood drill bit which is sharp at the tip. Okay. So we try this yeah, and we try to drill a hole here. Uh, first at the low RPM then you can go full speed. So we see some applications for uh, GSB 600 RE. So this will try to do with the hex heads. Okay. So here we have a, a magnetic adapter and there is a socket here. So we fix them. Yeah, it's sufficiently tightened. So what we do first is we try to loosen this uh, hex head here and then we try to tighten. Always remember uh, this has to be at a lower RPM. So this is in the tightening mode. So we change the direction here. So we try to loosen this up. You see that's got loosened. Then we tighten this again. And there it goes. So it's perfectly tightened. So now we try. Uh, to work on metal so the tool that we have is gsb 600 re so we'll drill on metal and seam so here i have a 8 mm uh, drill bit so let's start So here we have a GSB 600 RE and we are going to drill on a brick wall here as you can see the brick wall here. So what we do is, uh, so we have put 8mm drill bit, so this is for masonry wall. So this is the depth gauge. So I am trying to understand what is the depth I want to drill in this. So I set the depth, so here is the depth that I am getting. So I need to increase it, so I push it slightly further, alright. So this is the depth that I want to do on the 
wall ok. So, I do that. So, first thing need to check whether this is in the hammering mode, yes it is in the hammering mode that is the impact mode and then I trigger this on good to go. So, here I go. We try to understand a very, very uh, important part of the Bosch kit okay. and what is that? So, when you have bought a kit obviously you wanted to use it on some kind of a, uh, uh, various applications. So, this is an important application that we have here, how to drill onto a wall and fix something. When I am saying fix, it is basically to anchor something. So, what do you do after anchoring? After anchoring this, you can hang your uh, uh, curtains, wall hangings, uh, clocks it could be any of the sanitary uh, stuff that you want to do, any electrical uh, hang, uh, electrical fixings or uh, attachments that you want to fix. So, how do you do that? So, we know this is a brick wall. Okay. Now, first and foremost we need to drill a hole and then fix a anchor. So, two components out here. So, this is a plug, so where which, know, which goes inside the hole that you drill and this is the screw. So, what we do is we drill a hole first okay, and then we put the anchor inside and then the screw goes inside to tighten it up. So, a part of the screw would still remain outside that means it would protrude from the uh, surface. So, it is on that surface you can do some hanging or you want totally flushed then you can do the screw totally inside so that it gets totally flushed with the wall. So, that is that is the thing that you can always do. So, um, before you drill a hole, the most important thing that you need to find out is the size of the anchor. So, the size of the anchor, this is an 8 mm anchor, this is an 8 mm drill bit as well. Okay. So, so they have to match. So, the drill bit and anchor diameter has to match. So, that is what we are trying to do now here. So, we drill a 8 mm hole and then fix the anchor. Uh, as we go along, uh, we explain more of that. So, first let us drill. So, we put this in the hammer mode. Yes, it is on, yeah, perfect. So, let us drill. So, the first activity is over, we have drilled a hole and this is good enough. Second, we need to fix the anchor in it. So, how do you do it? Just very simple. Um, if you find this is slightly more dusty, just remove, make sure that you remove the dust. Okay. This is the right way to remove the dust okay. and then just plug in and insert it with your hand. You see? Now, this is totally flushed. So, the anchor is totally inside. Right. After this, I told you <laughs> with this, uh, we are not able to achieve anything. Okay. So, the screw has to go into this, so that you want to hang something and things like that. So, the anchor is pretty good. So, it has lot of load bearing capacity and so, you also need to use the good quality screws, so that it can take the load bearing. So, what I do is I, you can put this inside. All right. This is not good enough. You still need a screwdriver to tighten this up. It should have gone fairly inside so that there is no uh, ply. Okay, this is good enough. It will still take a lot of load, but I I want to I want this to go further inside. So I do a few more rounds of uh, screw driving. Right now, look at this. This is a perfect thing. All right, so it can take very good load. Right. So now we have fixed this, and and this can take some good weight. You can hang something on this, or you can fix something onto this. So, that is how it works. So, that is the anchoring process on a brick wall with the impact drill. Hello and welcome back. So, we will talk about some frequently asked questions on these topics and these questions are uh, very useful to all the people who want to use power tools and do various kinds of applications and uh, 
various kinds of usages in wood, uh, metal or uh, brick for that matter. So the most commonly asked question is, uh, what is the difference between a GSB and a GBM? So this is a typical nomenclature that Bosch follows. Uh, I'm sure uh, you go through the catalog or you go through the any portal, then you understand that these two are listed and more or less they look the same, but you are not able to find the finer difference between them. So let's try to understand what they are. Uh, a GBM is basically a very, very basic uh, rotary drill. Okay. So which means when I'm saying a rotary drill, so all the GBM machines are suitable for working on wood and metal. So I'm saying again, it's suitable for working on wood and metal. So what is a GSB? Okay. So GSB is a tool that can work on wood and metal. That's for sure. There is one more component that's added to the tool and that's the impact mechanism. And the impact mechanism is through ratchet and sleeve, which means that it's going to create small impacts like this when you're drilling on a brick or a light concrete. Okay. So when we are drilling in brick or light concrete, so a normal drilling will not make you go inside the material. So it is this impact force that's very crucial in creating that groove that we make on the brick or a concrete. So it, it works like this. And it is this impact that helps us in drilling into a concrete or a brick wall. So there's another popular question that keeps coming up quite often. Is GSB tool uh, good enough to work on light concrete or on a brick wall? But the question is, does it work on a concrete? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay, but the answer yes comes with an asterisk. What does it mean? So all the GSB tools, so the very uh, nomenclature GSB is an impact rule. So all these impact rules are 100% suitable for working on brick wall and they can also be used on light concrete. But that means that you're drilling on the light concrete uh, sometimes during the day, right? Not a regular thing. But if somebody wants to do regular working on concrete, okay, we strongly recommend please use our Bosch hammers starting with GBH series. So any GBH hammer is highly recommended for working on concrete, uh, concrete beams, pillars or columns, right? Yeah. So the next question that comes up uh, frequently to us is, what are the best practices uh, to keep the tool long lasting, all right? So what we need to do uh, to keep it long lasting? Uh, this is uh, like saying, what are the preventive maintenance that we need to follow? to make sure that the tool uh, gives its maximum life or maximum benefits to us. So first and foremost is uh, the tool has to be kept in a uh, dry and cool place, which means it should be away from moisture. That's something important. Second is it has to be away from dust also. So what do we do? So every time the work is done, so make sure that you're putting the tools back into this hard boxes and seal them properly, right? So that's important. There can also be instances, let's say you're not using the tool for months together, all right? So you have used it today and probably you're picking up the tool after three months or six months or maybe after an year also. So what do you do? So what we do is in that case, you don't start the tool, you pick up a tool and start drilling. No, you don't do that. So what you do is, just observe me what you do. This tool does not go onto the job for work, okay? So you need to run at no load speed. Right? So I'm stressing again, you need to run at the load, no load speed. So this is what I do. So what have I done now, right now? I triggered it on, all right? It was at a very low RPM, so let it run in low RPM for a few seconds. And then I increase the RPM and then I give it a full RPM, full throttle. And then it runs at full RPM for maybe let's say a minute or so. Why do we do that? Because we all know there would be greases, uh, grease on these uh, gears, okay? So if you're not used for quite some time, maybe the grease has become slightly hardened, okay? So you need to 
do this in a very slow RPM so that the grease starts moving and as the grease starts melting and you run the full RPM. So that means with that heat and friction, the grease has got covered all over the gears that you have and that lubrication is good enough for the tool to start running. So that's first and foremost. Second thing, uh, so when you are uh, using the tool after a long time or even for uh, what is the maintenance that you need to do before you place it somewhere, make sure you check the cables. Cables are not brittle and they won't be brittle because these are rubberized cables. So just check the cables are okay. Uh, just check if the switch is okay. Uh, also please check uh, uh, the chuck. Okay, And most important thing is you need to keep the chuck key back into the slot. So most often people tend to misplace this. So put this back into the slot. So I think if you follow this, uh, you have done a pretty good job for uh, keeping the tool for a long lasting uh, uh, tenure. So I get this question quite often saying that uh, there are sparks coming out of the tool. All right. And uh, when the first time people use it, they find the sparks and they say, oh, what happened? Is, this, is the tool okay or something wrong with the way I'm using it? It's perfectly okay. Okay. So when you use these tools for the first time, now look at this, this is the carbon brush, uh, slightly getting technical right now, but then uh, that's for the understanding, better understanding. So whenever this carbon brush comes in contact with the commutator of the armature, it's but natural to have sparks on the edges. Okay. That would only be for first few hours of use that you get the sparking. And once the groove settles to the same shape of the commutator, the spark would reduce substantially. So whenever you're using a new tool, not only uh, uh, this impact drill series of Bosch, any of the Bosch new tools, the sparking is but natural, but don't worry about this. After a few hours of use, the sparking will go away. Nothing to worry. Okay. Uh, this is something that we face in our Indian subcontinent. And this is a regular thing that we face. Uh, rusting of this uh, drill bits, all right. Uh, it's it's okay for the drill bits to rust. Don't don't uh, worry too much about that. Uh, if you find a drill bit slightly rusted or maybe fifty percent of it rusted, uh, nothing to worry. Uh, why I'm saying this? Only thing is maybe the appearance of the tool bit uh, drill bit uh, becomes different, but functionally, functionally. The drill bit is perfectly uh, nice and good enough to work on any surfaces. It has no bearing on the working of the drill bit itself. So it's perfectly okay if the drill bits are rusted. Uh, you might find some drill bits rusted during delivery. That's okay. Or even after a few years of usages, you might find some of them rusted. Nothing to worry. You can still continue with the work. It, it hardly matters to the output of the work that you're going to do. Right? Yeah. So the uh, question that keeps coming us uh, coming to us again is what's the difference between a GSB 10RE and a GSB 13RE? Uh, uh, both the nomenclatures look the same. So there's only the numerical difference between 10 and 13. So for example, let's pick up this tool. So this is a GSB 13RE. So what's, uh, what's special about this tool? So when we see the number 13, so this denotes that's the size of the chuck. So what you have here is a 13mm chuck. All right, and what you have here, so this is a GSB 10RE. Now this has got a 10 mm chuck. Uh, please, please see uh, the chuck size in both of them. I'm sure you will understand the size of the chucks are different. Okay, so this is a 10 mm chuck on GSB 10RE, and this is the 13 mm chuck on GSB 13RE. All right, and one more difference of a GSB 13RE is so the grip here is rubberized that's for fatigue free working all right now you see this grip it's totally rubberized